So I want to dialogue about some basic responsibilities, all the key things we're going to focus on when we get on scene. And uh, what we want to convey is that when you first arrive on scene, one of the most important things that you can do is obtain that competent person, do some sort of an interview, very rapid style, to identify where the victim's at and create some benchmarks on the far bank and the near bank so that you can kind of pinpoint where that last known location was with the victim. One of the great things about ICE is typically we've got some telltale signs about where that victim's at and how they got there. So whether you can see little footprints going across the ice, you can see that breach point in the ice, a lot of times those give us some good visual identifiers where that victim is at. From a safety perspective, we want to make sure that as we approach that bank as that first arriving company, that we've got some form of appropriate PPE on. At a minimum, we're talking about some minimal thermal protection um, and some PFDs. Get that bank work done, get those assessments done, identify that victim, and then wait for your other resources to, resources to get there to start affecting your rescue plan. Now, John, as a guru or a commander or an officer, a guy that's getting on scene and kind of going to run the event, what are the considerations that you're going to add um, from a responsibilities perspective to just what that initial crew has already established for you? Well, I think that uh, the situation is all dependent on the victim's condition. What, what type of victim we're going after, you know, what their abilities are, their capabilities are, and that, those first initial responders that make that assessment of the victim's condition dictates a lot of what we're going to be able to do. Um, that victim condition, you know, whether he's able to self-rescue or whether he's going to be able to hold on to a rope or if he's going to be able to reach a ladder or if he's completely submerged, you know, dictates everything. I think that's huge. and. and the best way to illustrate that, as that initial arriving company, once you've identified where that victim's at, especially if you can see them, you're going to do verbal call outs. So immediately try and establish a rapport with the victim, coach them to have eye contact with you, maintain focus on you as a rescuer on the bank, and then start going through your reaching, throwing, and self-rescue type of applications in the first part of our rescue sequence. So John, give us a little bit of tutorial on what that self-rescue type of coaching application looks like. Yeah, generally speaking, you want to you make sure, like you said, establish eye contact with that victim. When you are assessing that victim, you're going to ask very basic questions. Are you by yourself? Is there anyone else with you? You know, can you hear me? Can you talk to me? Where, you know, and those answers will tell you a lot of stuff. Sometimes when a person becomes extremely hypothermic, uh, their ability to answer appropriately is completely gone because of hypoxia and hypothermia and things like that. So they can even, uh, present like a, a drunk person even like they've hmm. been drinking for a while uh, so the answers may be inappropriate their ability to physically move you know their hands are going to be restricted because of the amount of time exposure time and the level of hypothermia by asking simple questions establishing that rapport establishing that eye contact and looking for those visual cues of what the victim can do then you'll be able to decide, okay, if I throw a throw bag at them, are they going to be able to hold on to it? Of course, we're going to try to keep those throwing at them because a lot of times we'll keep that victim focused on something, you know, and that drive, that determination for survival instinct for the victim will help get them through that. Um, we want to progress through the rescue sequence, but at the same time, you based on the victim's condition and your assessment of that victim's condition, we may have to dawn on our go rescue and go with a go rescue. You take a small toddler, a child that's fall through the ice and uh, it may be the last time you see him. So we may have to forego some of the shore based techniques and go straight into a go scenario uh, based on the assessment of those first responders. Great points. So as we develop that understanding of what that victim's capabilities are, that's going to help us formulate not just timeline-wise how we're going to approach the rescue sequence, uh, but also personnel-wise, logistically, and some other applications. Absolutely. Absolutely. Another facet that's got to get assessed initially is the ice conditions themselves. So when you approach that bank, you want to get a good assessment of that ice layer. How thick is it? How stable is it? Is it cracked? Is it fissured? Is it percolating? How quickly or readily is it going to break through? 
because those are all going to have um, contributing contributing components to what we decide about that go rescue. Absolutely. Are we going to do something boat based, sled based? Are we going to have to load distribute with some other applications? Float an air hose across? All those things play in based on our victim assessment and our ice assessment.